Well, greetings NASCAR enjoyers, and of course, today I have to talk about yesterday's Watkins Glen race. So, Watkins Glen, before we came into the race, there were problems with the bus stop chicane. Yeah, that corner is causing problems, even for famed road course veterans. Firstly, Kyle Larson was experiencing high G loads through the corner during practice, so NASCAR had to get the guys who constructed Watkins Glen to make some changes to the course. But then, we come into the race itself. Come Sunday, and we have a race that could potentially be good. And it was decent, but... You're going to see why it's not as highly rated as Infineon, a.k.a. Sonoma. So, first stage. Ross Chastain and Shane Van Gisbergen are seen working together like the good old buddies they are. In fact, they're going to be teammates next year, which is cool and good. Yeah, just have to make sure Ross Chastain gets along. But, both cars decide to pit. And of course, that leaves Martin Trix Jr. to win the first stage. And I also like to point out that there was also a caution on the first lap, lap of the race. Yeah. Can we please not have any first lap cautions for five minutes? But anyways, the second stage begins. And of course, we have another caution taking place in the second stage. But, thankfully, Ross Chastain got a deserving stage win. Although, they had to... Well... Although in the final stage, they had to deal with Prosper Texas, a.k.a. Chris Buescher. Yeah, I was going to call him the Texas driver. Yeah, I once called him the Texas driver. But I think Prosper Texas is a better nickname for him. I actually like that nickname, so I'm going to go with Prosper Texas instead of the Texas driver. I think it works. But anyways, in the final stage... Chris Buescher, a.k.a. Prosper Taxis, went ahead of Ross Chastain and Shane Van Gisbergen that needed to pet. And of course, there was another caution, and three more cautions, including a goofy ah caution where William Byron and Brad Keselowski go into the blind corner and crash into each other like dinkies. Or Hot Wheels cars. It's hilarious. But yeah, not very good for the two. In fact, it pretty much ended William Byron's day. And I also like to mention that Ryan Blaney also DNF'd in the race. And he wasn't even far into the race itself. So yeah, pretty much ended his whole day. So, it was a battle between... The two track house drivers, well, a track house driver, colleague driver, and a Roush Femme Kislowski driver, well, a colleague driver that would become a track house driver next year. And of course, we would get to see the strategies take place, and Shane Van Gisbergen could have won this race. In fact, I was rooting for him all the way, but then all of a sudden, in the final lap, in the dreaded bus stop chicane, by the way, Shane Van Gisbergen actually has the lead taken away from him by Prosper Texas, by the way. 
aka Chris Buescher, who drives the Hrimfax, yeah, no, with all build submarines, cars that RFK Racing has. I actually gave them specific nicknames. I'll explain later. So, Prosper Texas takes away Shane Van Gisbergen's victory. All because of driver error and the dreaded bus stop chicane. Yeah, that corner has been causing problems for even road course veterans. And of course, Chris Buescher, a.k.a. Prosper Texas, ends up winning. Yeah, to be fair, it was a pretty good victory, and at least Joey Logano didn't win, and at least he got past Joey Logano. But this was Shane Van Gisbergen's race to win. Yeah, I know, I know what you're going to say. But Chris Buescher won the race fair and square. But still, this was Shane Van Gisbergen's race to win. But he lost due to the dreaded bus stop chicane and driver error. Yeah, if it wasn't for driver error in the dreaded bus stop chicane, Shane Van Gisbergen would have won. But alas, it's not to be. And this is why I'm giving this race a 7 out of 10, or 7.3 out of 10 with the decimal system. It gets points because one Pablo Montoya has come back for the very last time in NASCAR. This is his final race, his final ride. So it's worth it to see Juan Pablo Montoya. But it has points taken away from it because of the stolen victory. Prosper Texas, Chris Buescher, took away Shane Van Gisbergen's hopes of winning. But I'm hoping that Shane Van Gisbergen isn't too upset about the win. I mean, SVG is usually a pretty calm guy. Unlike Joey Logano, who tried to run over Austin Dillon's pit crew when he lost the race because of a bump and run, and Austin Dillon's spotter was told to wreck him. Yeah. That race was a can of worms, but the finish was pretty spectacular. And yeah, the Watkins Glen race gets a 7 out of 10 just like the Veon slash Sonoma race. I think the Sonoma race is better because it gets a decibel score of a 7.5 out of 10. But it is what it is. And in case you're wondering, yes, I did see the end of the Xfinity race after it came back from watching Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And that race gets an 8 out of 10 because of Connor Silich's first win. Yeah, the race ended under caution. I'm usually not a fan of races that end under a caution, but it was spectacular. Connor Silich drove the car to the line during caution, and he took his first ever win in his first NASCAR Xfinity Series debut. Bravo, man. You are amazing. And I hope that things go well for you in the Cup Series in 2026. So, I pray for your success, Connor Silich. You were a spec me auto driver once. Now, you're in NASCAR. And you're one of the track house prospects. But anyways, the Watkins Glen Cup Series race had a stolen victory. Yeah. Prosper Texas, Chris Buescher, took away Shane Van Gisbergen's chances of winning. And yes, about the whole nicknaming thing. Yes, I actually came up with nicknames for the BuildSubmarines.com sponsored RFK cars. Yeah, unfortunately someone has to vacuum, so I have to so I have to, well, filming will be delayed, so I'll be back. I'm back. Yeah, someone decided to vacuum on the same day that I decided to film the video. <sighs> Note to self, when someone decides to vacuum, make sure you start the video a day earlier. But anyways... About the whole naming convention between the Build Submarine sponsored cars, so... 
The Stage 60 car, never mind that notification on the phone. The Stage 60 car, the possible third charter if it ever gets the built submarine slot com spot ship, is nicknamed the Synfaxi. The first submarine boss that you encounter in Ace Combat 5. The more powerful of the two Synfaxi class submarines is the Hrimfaxi, which is a, the nickname given to Chris Busher's sponsored built submarines.com car. And of course, the Hrimfaxi launches unmanned aerial vehicles instead of Harrier jets and F-35s. And if you haven't known already, the Hrimfax is basically the Synfaxi, except more powerful and with a more intense f boss theme. Yeah, it's the more powerful of the two Synfaxi class submarines according to Ace Combat lore. And yes, those are two big s submarines from the Ace Combat games. The most powerful of these type of submarines is the only Alicorn class submarine called the Alicorn, and that's the nickname given to Brad Kislevsky's car that has the BuildSubmarines.com sponsor. And of course, as you have know already, Brad Kislevsky is the head of the of RFK Racing. He's the co-owner of the team, so it makes sense to give the nickname for the six car as the Alcorn is bigger and more powerful than the two Synfaxi class submarines yeah so if you have played Ace Combat games you have you probably know about these submarines but for those of you who are unaware the these submarines are big Super weapons that, of course, carry aircraft and have the ability to launch ballistic missiles. They're also nuclear powered. Yeah, and these submarines wouldn't be possible in real life just like any other Ace Combat super weapon. The Hrimfax, I mean, the Alicorn is so powerful that it could launch nuclear warheads, which is pretty scary. Imagine that in real life. <sighs> it cut off because <sighs> the battery suddenly died because I forgot to charge it. But anyways, it's why I decided to give those cars nicknames. I mean, people used to give NASCAR racing cars clever nicknames. Back in the olden days, you got cars like Midnight and Midnight Rider. People don't do that anymore, except for me, because... I do want to give, still give cars clever nicknames. Yeah, these nicknames are actually clever, given the fact that the sponsors are related to military submarines, and guess what those three submarines from Ace Combat are? Military-grade submarines that are G gigantic and enormous they are mega giants well bigger than your average submarine which submarines are already big as it is but these are even bigger but anyways next week's race is going to take place or this week's race that well this weekend's race is going to take place at Bristol baby yeah I prefer Dover but the reason why I'm excited is because in the Xfinity series Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going to race in Bristol for the final time ever I cannot miss out on this race I have to see it on Friday night so see you at Bristol but in the meantime I'm gonna do some other videos so yeah if you like that race I suggest you take a look at the other road course race that involves Kyle Larson winning. 
And you know the drill by now. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the latest Racer Cinema Productions videos. Although, to people who are already subscribed to my channel, all you have to do is like and comment. But, anyways, this is the Bandito sign off. I'm excited for Bristol. Because Dale Jr. is going to be racing the Xfinity Series. And all I have to say is, catch you guys next time. Peace out. Wish you luck, Dale.